A portion of today's video is brought to you by Atlas VPN. If someone's heart stops, their cells and organs are quickly damaged by the lack of oxygen. As each second passes, their chances of survival plummet. The blood becomes more acidic from the buildup of CO2 and enzymes begin digesting cell membranes, leading to organs rapidly losing their structural integrity. The challenge in preventing permanent death is largely in halting or reversing these processes. And that, until very recently, was thought to be impossible. On August 3rd, a team of researchers at Yale University reported in Nature a technology that could restore cellular activity, even hours after death and potentially reanimate entire organs. This technology called Organ X could also be employed to initiate cell repair in damaged organs, such as in cases of cardiac ischemia or after a heart attack. It may even lead to more effective organ transplantation methods, allowing organs to survive longer outside of the body. But certainly it brings into question what, or at least when, is death and can we reverse it? Let's take a deeper look at what actually happened during the study. In the work published in Nature, researchers ran a study on pigs that had been officially dead for an hour. They attached some of these animals to their organ X system, while others received no treatment at all or were hooked up to an ECMO machine, an extracorporeal membrane oxygenation machine, which some hospitals use in a last ditch effort to supply oxygen and remove carbon dioxide from the body. The organ X technology that the researchers developed is a reperfusion approach that involves the recirculation of oxygen and blood to cells and tissues so that they can remain functional even hours after death. The OrganX system is driven by two main components, a perfusion device that simulates the heart and lung function and pumps the second component, the perfusate, through the body. The perfusate is a customized synthetic blood containing a synthetic hemoglobin called Hemopure and 13 other compounds such as anticoagulants. This serves to slow down the decomposition of the body and appears to restore some organ function such as heart contraction and activity in the liver and kidneys. Six hours into the study, researchers noticed that the circulation had restarted much more effectively in pigs that had received the organ X solution than in those that had received ECMO or no treatment at all. Oxygen was detected in tissues all over the bodies of the organ X animals, and a heart scan detected some electrical activity and some early signs of contraction. But the heart at no point actually fully restarted. The researchers also noticed that the livers of the organ X pigs produced more of a protein called albumin than the livers of the pigs in the other groups potentially indicating a higher increase in liver function had been restored. The cells in each of the vital organs of the organ X pigs also seemed to respond more highly to glucose than the other animals, suggesting that treatment had also kickstarted some sort of metabolic function. This work builds on a previous publication back in 2019, which reported that the organ X system could reverse signs of cell death when connected to the brains of pigs four hours after death. The goal of this study was to see if that fluid could also help reverse damage that occurs to other organs after death. In the 2019 study, although OrganX helped to preserve the integrity of some brain tissue, researchers did not observe any coordinated brain activity that would indicate that the animals had in any way regained consciousness or sentience. But they also acknowledged that this might have been absent because the solution pumped through was about 28 degrees centigrade. This colder than normal body temperature fluid, or maybe because it included anesthetic compounds or neurological blockers, could have suppressed such brain signals, so further studies probably need to be done here. But does this technique just keep our vital organs safe, or could it help us to actually reverse death? To answer that question, we need to understand the definition of death. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Atlas VPN, who help by keeping your vital information safe online, smooth transition, and who are currently running a huge discount. A virtual private network or VPN is an encrypted connection over the internet from a device to a network. The encrypted connection helps ensure that sensitive data is safely transmitted and prevents unauthorized people from eavesdropping on the traffic, and allows the user to browse safely. It also means that you can stream shows that otherwise might not be available in your 
region. With the click of a button, you can be browsing Netflix as if you were in any other country in the world. Atlas VPN also allows you to connect an unlimited number of devices to your account, making it one of the best deals on the internet. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount, which means you can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 per month. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Now let's get back to the video. The history of death is a complicated one. It turns out doctors have had a hard time defining death over human history. Is he dead? Hell no, he's drunk. We've long used criteria and technology to assist in the diagnosis of death. Somatic criteria such as the presence of decomposition and rigor mortis are some of the oldest approaches in human history to saying when something definitely is dead. Throughout history, we've also commonly looked to breath to indicate life or death. Shakespeare writes of King Lear requesting a looking glass and stating that if her breath will mist or stain the stone, why then she lives. Feathers and candles held to the mouth were often utilized for a similar purpose of measuring faint breath and so proving death. In the 17th century, William Harvey first described the circulation of blood and the function of the heart as a pump. Under this concept, death became related to when the heart and circulation stopped. However, the difficulty in detecting a very weak pulse led to common fears of premature burial. Famously captured in the 18th century when George Washington made his dying request, have me decently buried and do not let my body be put into the vault in less than three days after I am dead just to prevent against the chance that he should recover from death and find himself buried. This common fear led to the construction of waiting mortuaries and security coffins with alarm mechanisms and permanent air supplies. As the diagnostic criteria for death were so unclear, Egbert Guernsey, writing in the 1853 homeopathic domestic practice, warned against diagnosing death on the basis of cold or pulse, or the use of a feather to detect respiration, and advocated for a return to rigor mortis or its termination as the only safe criteria. Then history, as it's liable to do, got kind of weird, and in an effort to define death, mechanisms were proposed from many prominent scientists, such as the introduction of leeches near the anus, applying a specially designed pincer to the nipple, or piercing the heart with a long needle with a flag at the end of it, which would wave if the heart was still beating. How the hell is this dude still alive? Thankfully though, the stethoscope was invented in 1890 by René Leineck, which seemed like overall much less stress and hassle, and was put forward as a technological aid to diagnose death in 1846 by Dr. Eugene Bouchon who won the Academy of Sciences prize for the best work on the signs of death and the means of preventing premature burials. In the decades that followed, with the advent of mechanical ventilation, the need to diagnose death using neurological criteria was first realized. It was proposed that a loss of electrical activity in the brain might signify the most accurate way of diagnosing human death. This need for an accurate diagnosis became particularly pressing as organ transplantation became possible around 1963 when Belgian surgeon Guy Alexander carried out the first transplantation from a donor whose heart was still beating. Knowing when neurological death had actually occurred so organs could be transplanted became incredibly important. In the last few decades, the medically accepted definition of death has been defined as the irreversible loss of the capacity for consciousness combined with the irreversible loss of the capacity to breathe. Back in August, the team at Yale may not have changed this definition, but they may have redefined what irreversible now means. So what does this mean in terms of practical applications? Given the difference in how the pig's organs fared with Organ X compared to ECMO, this is potentially a landmark study that could significantly increase the number of organs that could be recovered for human transplantation. ECMO is currently our best approach to preserve organs of recently deceased to allow for organ donation, or to try and resuscitate people following something like a heart attack. But typically the timeline to start ECMO is very short after something like a heart attack or death and even then the success rates are typically very very low. If the findings of this study can be replicated in animals and eventually in humans, the implications for human longevity could be as profound as the advent of CPR and ventilators in terms of resuscitation, or equally our ability to preserve organs for transportation, which are always in short supply. This system could also potentially be used as a treatment to help people who have had a heart attack or a stroke or some other restriction of blood supply to their heart or brain. Perfusing with the Organ X perfusate 
could help heal those organs even many hours after the heart attack or stroke has occurred. The research team says the first practical use of this system probably will be in keeping organs for transplantation healthier for longer so that they can be transplanted further between deceased donors and the people who need them. The much more radical use of this technology to ultimately reverse death, the researchers stressed was far, far in the future, if at all possible. The interesting thing about this study is that it further emphasizes that death is not a moment, but a process, making it challenging to come up with a uniform way to declare a person dead. That means probably that the legal definitions may actually continue to be adapted as medicine continues to advance. People tend to focus on brain death, but there's not much consent on when cardiac death actually occurs. As with the 2019 paper, this study is likely to reinvigorate a debate about the definition of death and the ethics of post-mortem organ donation. Obviously though there is a great deal more experimentation required to adapt this technology for human usage. The perfusate would have to be adapted to human blood and careful considerations need to be taken as to the ethics of giving someone this technology that may reverse some, but not all, of the damage that has been done. As science pushes forward, our understanding and our definition of death will continue to change. Maybe one day we'll defeat it altogether.